mothering the cities, that grand adventure of seeking to serve the peoples of a city, bringing about unity, harmony, dignity, productivity, creativity across a wide swathe of a population and fostering culture uh, and business and the arts and the quality of life for all of its people, creating a place of dignity. What a grand calling. And all of these begin in the very nature of the God that we know, the God that is the personhood, the personality behind the infinite universe in which we dwell. A God revealed in that mythology in Genesis 1. Now, when I say mythology, in English it means something untrue. But in anthropology, it means that grand theme that moves the nation, in this case, that has moved the uh, Western societies and currently is moving many other cultures across the world, that holds them together and moves them forward. And in this case, this is a true mythology. As we look at 35 characteristics of this God within this uh, chapter of Genesis 1, we can only stand in marvel. The center of all of this, the nature of this God, is love. This is the central principle of the universe. Of course we know that, right? Of course we know there is a God, because without a God, how would there be such a structure? That's self-evident. Uh, but we also understand that love is a central element of our personality uh, and our collective relationships with each other. And if that's true for us and our collectives, surely the infinite being that is at the source of who we are must be far grander and greater in the nature, the infinite nature of his love must be so grand that it holds the structures of the universe together. And this we find in Genesis 1, where it says in the beginning, God said, let us, and that's not just two people, that's three or more in the original, let us make. And so we've got this communication between three beings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, the Son, the Word of God, the voice of God, these three communicating within this Godhead. And our being follows after that nature of the community of God and the communication within that Godhead in a sense of unity in the community, unity with differentiation of rules, unity that then is reflected into marriage relationships, family dynamics, and out of those family dynamics out into the village, the town, the city, and eventually the megalopolis and the nations. So let us look at 35 characteristics of this God that are revealed in Genesis 1 in a garden and then project them forward, and we find in the end of the scriptures in Revelations 22, the future city of God, and those characteristics manifest there. Now, it's a, what are these 35 characteristics? Well, in the beginning, God said, so he's communicating. Mm -hmm. And then it says that uh, the Spirit of God was hovering over the creation. So he was waiting and, and there was there was chaos and there was nothingness. And then he began to move. And as he moved, the creation was formed and the spirit of God from then to this day continues to form and to create the dynamics of the universe and then of the world 
And then through us, all of the cities. And this occurs as the voice of God, the word. We understand this great voice that occurred 13.4 billion years ago, so the scientists say, this great explosion of wave forms begins to foster the particles that then form atoms, that then form the elements that we know that then form the very fabric of the earth and of the universe. And this Spirit of God and Word of God working together create. Um, and so creativity is at the very center of the city, and we look for creative cities, and so is productivity for God said, let us make, and we in his image seek to make, and as we make, as we create, so the cities grow and expand, and we create from things sufficient to enable people to live with dignity and honor and integrity into a lifestyle of sufficiency and even some excess such that there is enjoyment and pleasure and goodness and so the good city grows out of us reflecting this goodness of god in genesis chapter one now i could go on with many other of his characteristics his artistry in creating he made all things good He's an artist, and artistry in the city, and the source of creativity in the city is, is part of his being, and, and the aesthetics of a good city is there within his being. So we have this work of the spirit, the structurer, the sustainer. We have the work of God, the Father. Now, this Father... It's an interesting dynamic that we find for fathers. It's as if they always are. They exist. They're there. And we, we match ourselves against our father again and again. Even uh, at 72, my father died at this age, and I still think of what would my father do? How would he respond? Can I maintain the grace that my father had? Do I have the wisdom that he exhibited? Um, fathers exist. Fathers um, love and create an environment of love within their family. There is a gentleness in a godly father, and research shows that entrepreneurs come out of families where the father exercises authority but with gentleness. Now, there is authority in the family. Uh, it's not universal authority. Initially, it's very strong authority with children, but as they grow, then it uh, evolves into different forms. Um, it's an authority based on this love and the trust of that love. And out of this fatherhood and out of this love, so communities are, are built. Um, Fatherhood is presence. Fatherhood is stability. Fatherhood is uh, is wisdom. Um, and that, that wisdom, the scripture says, is represented in Christ himself, who is our wisdom. James, his brother, says that in, first, in James 3, 16 and 17, that wisdom listens. Wisdom seeks consensus. Wisdom is open to reason. Is gentle. So godly wisdom is at the core of the city. Christ is the core of the city, for he is the integrator of the structures, so the scriptures say, say. And he is the reconciler, and he brings all things together. Cities are centers of structures. So obviously Christ is at work in the structuring of the cities. He's a reconciler of the peoples. And so as Christians, we celebrate the dignity, the cultures of peoples. Other, others who are opposed to the nature of God 
seek to destroy the cultures of people, seek to create universals, singularities of cultures in cities or in nations, as we're seeing in authoritarian regimes today. But Christians and, and those who follow after this God of the universe, they seek to celebrate culture, but also with their attentions between the cultures to understand, to bring about places of understanding, to bring about places of uh, communication. So there is understanding. Uh, and to bring about reconciliation where there has been destructive dynamics between cultures. Only in Christ do we have someone who gave his life to reconcile man with God and man with man, person with person, woman with woman. So those who follow God in city leadership seek to create a family of belonging across the city. And say, but we're Christians, how can you do that with Muslims and Hindus and Jains in your city? That's why we create in cities, because cities have multiple cultures, multiple religions. You know, a village is one, one language, one culture. A town may be three languages, three cultures. But a city is 183, and multiple religions. And a megalopolis is a thousand. So we create public space, a secular domain. And some say a secular means a religious. No, no, it doesn't. A secular domain creates a space of common language, common communication, but we're best to do that with a clarity of our cultural and religious dignity. It is much easier for me to walk with a Muslim man when we both know what we believe and can communicate on that basis than to be somewhat wishy-washy, like, I don't really believe this, I don't know what I believe, really. That doesn't create trust. But a clarity of belief means we can dialogue, we can listen, we can seek to understand, and yet we know who we are. So there is this public dialogue, this public space. Uh, it's not just dialogue, it's conversation because there are multiple dimensions here. Do we still seek to communicate our truth because we believe? Yes, we can do that in the midst of the dialogue, and it's welcomed. And it may not be received, but it's welcomed because of the manner, the style of our communication. So this public space, there are universals, loves that I have mentioned. All religions, all cultures understand love, the beauty of the love within the Bengali family, the nature of Bengali family life, most beautiful thing. And yet it's deeply embedded within Hinduism. Uh, love is a universal principle, justice. We may see justice differently to our Muslim brother or sister, but the principle of justice is very strong and the principle of mercy is very strong in these religions. Truth. All people seek truth, uh, all good peoples. Uh, so we, we can speak of four, there are at least eight universals like this that in the public square become common values. So Christ is the integrator of that socio-political public square. We bring Christ into that. We bring him into the integration of the economic structures also. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. This passage goes on and speaks of the visible and invisible things, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority. So there are human authorities, human thrones. There are also supernatural authorities that uh, those who don't know Christ have not perhaps understood, although Hollywood seems to. I've picked up on them, and, and its rejection of God himself finds that that's the direction it has to take. All of these things were created through him, for him, and as subject to him. He's before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
So godly city fathering means manifesting this nature of Christ, creating frameworks for productivity, a, a creative city, a productive city where all people have sufficient to live, a, a city where there is a foundation of education. Before you can have productivity, you must have education, you must have health care. These are foundational on that you can build. Um, so the wisdom of Christ manifests in educational systems are there. So these are some of the characteristics of God himself. In looking at fathering cities, we have to ask, are they our characteristics? Have we manifest them in our families? Have we manifest them in our church life as we've built fellowships of believers working together? Have we manifested them in our, our, our movement dynamics? Uh, uh, tough questions, because we're all pretty broken people, and we deal with very broken people. Uh, we're kind of the blind leading the blind, but has God touched what we're doing with his presence and his spirit? with these fruit of the spirit of love and joy and peace and patience, kindness and godliness, self-control. Have these been multiplied out to hundreds and thousands in our movements? If so, then it may mean we are moving into that wider city-wide leadership where with other brothers and sisters of these kind of movements, we're working together. And what are these city leadership teams? How do the fatherhood teams develop? And I use the word fatherhood to include motherhood. It's just complex in English to constantly be saying that. Um, and there are, there are several evident teams. One is the political councils, the city councils. Uh, we, we obviously know them. And we can speak of the spiritual leadership of a city, I speak of uh, two or perhaps three clusterings of these. <coughs> Excuse me. The first would be the apostolic uh, pastoral leadership of a, of a city. This is uh, those who are leading movements of change, movements of uh, spiritual revitalization, spiritual renewal, um, transformation of so many hundreds and thousands of lives out of the, the depths of depravity of the sin of the city, out of the depths of bondage to the various sins of the city. Um, and, and watching that transformation move into the structures of the city. So these are, these are change agents, good. And, and those people begin to know each other, work with each other. The other is the old boys bishops council. Now, the old boys, uh, saying that with my tongue in cheek, because I know a good number of such, and uh, what an amazing, amazing role these brothers and some sisters carry. I mean, I don't know if you play rugby, but in New Zealand they do, and the front forwards work in the scrum to push back the other team. And to me, the pastors of a city are those who stand as the culture collapses, as the culture seeks to invade the lives of their people. They hold the moral foreground within a society and keep it from fracturing and going rotten. Such are the men at the very forefront of the scrum to sustain our culture and our society. And the bishops are the pastors of the pastors. Very gracious men, usually very gracious on the outside and yet have a certain steel on the inside, meek men. Such are not called to make great advances. They're called to bless those who are making those great advances. So go to your bishop, ask him for your blessing. Ask him for his blessing on your work. And at the same time, bless the bishop. And the bishops meet together, and they have shared interests um, across the city. So there's a second group of leaders that are there. 
we could say there may be a third group, which is the religious leaders across religions. Now, here it's a different dialogue altogether. It's a dialogue of uh, being able to support each other when there are communal issues that are common to all. And there are certain moral issues which Muslims and Christians hold together, which Catholics and Protestants hold together, um, where we wish to stand together. There are certain events that happen the the destruction of a, of a mosque for the Christians to then defend the freedom of religion and to stand with the Muslim brothers means such a great deal within a city, such a sense of respect, such an honoring and a dignity for a culture that's feeling oppressed, um, such we've experienced in New Zealand. Um, now we can speak of a third cluster, which is also religious, uh, but uh, is really the deacons and the deaconesses. Now I can't use that phrase too much because some of the Christian traditions have got definitions of that that are kind of historical and somewhat unusual, not fully in line perhaps with the scriptures from my perspective. Uh, so it's better perhaps just to say the social services leadership, but the gifting of the deacon and the deaconess is that of administration with mercy to serve the poor, like Robin Hood taking money from the rich, giving to the poor. And these are such men and women. And this cluster, often largely led by women, is the most amazing uh, cluster within a city, sustaining that bottom society of society, keeping it from self-destructing. Now you have also the business leadership. In Auckland, that's the 200 uh, top business leaders in the business round table. Uh, again, a lot of godly men within that and bringing to it values, creating values that multiply within the business community, influencing the government in economic issues. Uh, part of our role as spiritual leaders in the city leadership is to teach the biblical principles of economics to the business leadership. And then we have this educational leadership I've mentioned here, but we could speak of other leadership in different sectors of the city. Um, so there are many of these. And then we've got the second level of leadership around these and out from that even to another level. So in the next, uh, in this series, I would like to look at, I've got 16 processes on the slide, but actually seven processes, and consider those seven uh, processes in uh, 20, 20 sectors of urban society. Um, and uh, so look at 84 multiplying spiritual dimensions, and momentum in each of those dimensions. How do we foster this within the city? How do we move the apostolic at city-wide levels into these different dimensions, such as the calling of a city leadership team? What an amazing calling to sacrifice your lives for the sake of a city and the people of the city and the unity of those people, and the dignity of those people, and the uplift of those people, so that they might live full lives, and in that fullness find godliness. Um, what a wonderful thing to bring that work of the Holy Spirit across the city in all of these dimensions, not simply at the religious level, but at the level of the nature of this God himself, the God of love, the God of structure, the God of community, the God of communication. Would you consider this challenge? According to your gifting, would you consider how to support those who have this kind of challenge? Would you take your city to God in prayer this day? 
And if you've not known this God, this God of the universe, would you bow before him and seek in your heart to honor him and follow after him? So that you might touch thousands, perhaps millions. Thank you.